Good morning, Shiloh. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, Indianapolis, Indiana. The Lord's Church where God's love and God's word transform lives. I'm so glad you decided to join us in worship this morning. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. That may not be your testimony, but this morning, that's my testimony. I just want to let him know that. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. Come on, let's put our hands together some more and just give God praise. Give God praise. You're here right now because the Lord has found it fitting for you to be alive, for you to be able to breathe, for you to be able to sit in these pews. God has done this thing and it's not because of your own strength, not because of your own power, your own wittiness you're just because you cute God did it because grace where sin abounds the Bible says grace abounds that much more I thank God this morning for blessing us and keeping us when we could not keep ourselves mm -hmm. I thank God this morning that we was able to lay down last night in peace and get up in peace for his grace Yes. is sufficient I thank God this morning no matter who sits on the throne of the United States of America his throne still is higher than that throne yes and his ways are always higher than their ways that no matter what happens God is still in control yeah. do I have any witnesses in this place that can testify to the fact that God is in control. No matter what the situation, he still has his hand on you. He still comes to see about you. He makes house calls on a global level to make sure that his children are all right. I praise God this morning. I thank my pastor for another opportunity to preach God's uncompromising word. I thank God this morning. I was up with the Lord late at night. I got up this morning with him. And when God preaches to you, you better have a pen and piece of paper. Because he's sharing something special. Not only for you, but for those that you encounter. Amen. I sleep with a pen and a pad beside my bed. Because all right, all right. I don't know when he plans to come and sit and wake me up. But whenever he comes and sits to wake me up, I want to be ready to take note of everything that God has said. Because it's life changing and life making. 
if you understand the power of God's word. Amen. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to Luke the 22nd chapter. Starting at the 34th, 31st verse. Luke the 22nd chapter. Starting at the 31st verse. And when you get there, could you stand for the reading of God's holy word? Luke 22nd chapter, starting at the 31st verse. And when you get there, could you say amen? amen. Luke the 22nd chapter, starting with the 31st verse. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked for you. That he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. That your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, Simon, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me may the lord add a blessing to the hearing reading and doing of his holy word you may be seated in the presence of the lord the last time i was with you i, I shared with you a few things about god's process of sifting amen uh, today is part two part two of that theme the sifting and, and the last time that I was with you, I talked to you about this process of sifting and some may call it trying where uh, his process of trying us through trouble. And in Peter's case, his trouble was his ego. Amen. His trouble was his ego. He thought too much of himself. He thought that he could do it all. He thought that he was the leader of the pack. And in his own mind, whether he said it or not, he thought he was better than everybody else. And in this we see that the Lord, in, it, it is in the process of sifting that the Lord removes self righteousness for his righteousness for the Lord desires for you to be greater than you were when you just found him amen somebody he wants you to be more productive more effective more powerful so that when and not if but when uh he, the devil himself, shows up. When the devil begins to ask to try you, to sift you, he's doing this because he wants to see what hath the Lord made. And so the devil sits back and he watches how we interact with God. He watches to see is there going to be a foothold where he can insert himself and cause division or a rift between you and God. Because you have to understand that Satan is jealous of the relationship that God has with mankind. He, he's still mad because he has fallen from the Lord. And he's trying his best each and every day to get in between you and God to show God that what you have made ain't no better than me. And, 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 and in, this, in this we see that, that when this sifting happens, 
the Lord, he allows the devil himself to try you, to sift you, uh, to see what the Lord has made. So when the wicked, y'all know this, when the wicked, even your enemies and your foes, come upon you to eat up your flesh, they will stumble and fall, though a host should encamp around you. Uh, even then, even when your heart shall fear, your heart shall not fear, though war shall rise against you. In this, you need to be confident because what the Lord has made, he indeed keeps. Amen, somebody. Uh, 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 can, can, can I get it? somebody say, I, I feel you, preacher. Do y'all feel me this morning? You see, see, when God has made something, he just doesn't leave it to itself. It is an extension of his glory. It is an extension of his power, his majesty, his might. And so therefore we are a reflection of him. Amen. And so we have to understand that because we are a reflection of him, that's the reason why hell has broken loose against you. Because there's one thing you desire and that you seek after, that you may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, all the days of your, high, of your life, and behold the beauty of his majesty and inquire in his temple listen 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 satan wants to sift you why because you want to be close to god that's the reason why he wants to sift you because you're getting too close to your answers you're getting too close to your breakthrough you're getting too close to the truth you're getting too close to his glory that's why he wants to sift you because you want to do right and you want to leave wrong because you you want Jesus over the world. That's the reason why you're catching hell. But let me encourage you this morning. God's sifting only ha, has only gotten you ready for his lifting. God's sifting has only got you ready for his lifting. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. For the Bible says, for don't you know the plans God has for you? Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Plans so that you will succeed and not fail. Peter said he was, he was in, in his ego and in his confidence, Peter said he was ready to go to prison and if necessary, go and die. He was willing, he said he's, he's ready to go to prison and to death for Jesus. But the question is, are you willing to let go of yourself? That's what Jesus wanted Peter to do. He said, Peter, that's all fine and well. We're going to get to that. But the, the, the enemy of you is not Satan himself. It's you. You are your own worst enemy because if you don't let go, then how can you grow? If you don't let go and depend upon me, then every time you are sifted, you will fail. Peter, you have to recognize your own blind spot because you have to be able to see yourself in the mirror of God's glory, in the mirror of God's salvation. In the mirror of God's redemption. Because only in that mirror can you see that I'm a wretch undone. It was Peter. That was Peter's own worst enemy. Jesus was helping Peter and allowing him to fail. To keep him safe. Until he was ready spiritually. Catch this. To do what he just said he could do. You see, sometimes God blocks your path so that you won't overthink what you really are able to do. You see, Peter thought that he could do everything that Jesus could do. But it was the master that saw Peter and said, though you say you're able to do it, you don't have the power to do what I can accomplish. 
Sometimes God stops you in order to save you from yourself. He, he stops you in order to save you from yourself. You see, you see, you see, your failure was a pushback until you're ready to step forward. Peter failed, but thank God it wasn't forever. Jesus was so good, though he knew Peter was going to deny him and not be fit for a moment to run this race. He still said, I know you're going to fail. But when you have returned to me, oh, I thank God for just that line. When I know you're going to fail, but when you have returned to me, we got to stop right there. You see, you're not rejected because you fail. No, 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 no. God's plan of salvation is based on the disposition and anticipation you were born with failure in your lineage. You see, let me explain. Adam, who was created by God, and Eve, who was created in the image of God to be Adam's helpmate, even though they had the best of intentions, after they ate the apple or the fruit in the garden that they should not have eaten, sin was implanted in our spiritual and, ge and genetic DNA. We were prone from that point in time to fail and sometimes fail miserably. Because our success had been compromised by our very own hand. Amen, somebody. Uh, for you were born into sin uh, uh, and we are prone to failure. Not that we will fail all the time, but we have a disposition. We have a proneness to fail sometimes. Amen. But I thank God that failure is not forever. Unless you stop trying or give up the faith. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. We're going to fail sometimes, saints. But I pray that our faith did not fail in Jesus and telling the story of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, Peter failed, but God knows the ending from the very beginning. The Bible says in Isaiah 46, I feel my, my help coming on. The Bible says in Isaiah 46 and 9, he says, I am God and there is no other. Who declares the end from the beginning and, and from ancient times things that are not yet done for what I have purpose. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will bring it to pass for I have purposed it, thus saith the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, God knows you're going to fail. But like the prodigal son, the father sees you from afar off. <laughs> and though you failed, he told his other son, get ready because he's coming back. What am I saying to you this morning? Don't you know that your comeback is greater than your fall? All you have to do is get up and try again and let the Lord dust you off and put you on the right path and send you on your way. God is able to restore everything that the devil tried to take away from you he knows that he seeks to devour you but the Lord who is greater can return unto you everything <laughs> uh, the Bible says that the locusts uh, that the pestilence has tried to eat away you see I want to come by and tell somebody to be encouraged because God sees you he sees you. He knows exactly where you are. And, and, and Peter, when I looked at Peter, I looked and I looked past his failure. And I went on and I tracked Peter over in the book of Acts. And you have to read Acts 2. Because in Acts 2, Peter's comeback is legendary. How did Peter go from being a wimp 
to a warrior. How did he go from being egocentric to God-centered? He was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Bible records Simon got up after the filling of the Holy Ghost and stood on the rock of his salvation and preached an on-time word to a stiff-necked people about the salvation and the goodness of God in the land of the living. He preached the gospel and told them about a man named Jesus. He reminded them about good King David and he walked down that family line and he said I know you've heard about good King David and I'm not trying to take nothing away from David. He was our patriarch by the way. He was a good king and the Lord created the dynasty off of the back of David but there's somebody better than David. David has come. David who sat on the throne was only holding it for the king of kings and lord of lords. David was only the predecessor of the one he saw in his prayers. The one he saw in his visions who was to come. But just, but after he got finished telling them about David, after he got finished telling them about the patriarch, he said, as good as David was, he lays right there. He said, as good as David was, he lays in a tomb right there. But I've come to tell you about the tomb breaker. I've come to tell you about the one that when the tomb and death try to hold him, the bounds of death and the grave had to let go so that God can be supreme is there any witnesses in this place that can raise your hand and say God is supreme though they try to bind him in the grave though they try to keep him in the grave the battle it was going on for three days but the Bible says early on the third day he got up from the grave with all power in his hands and he told death give me your sting and he told the grave open up the rock and he folded up the linen laid it down on the rock and he stepped outside of that place and said before I sin to my father where are my Marys it was Jesus that went to his Marys and they said we're on our way to the tomb, man. He said, where are you going? Yeah. He said, we're on our way to the tomb so that we can finish what we started. But what I'm trying to tell somebody is that you don't have to finish what God started. Even though you failed, he will complete you unto perfection. The Bible says, <laughs> are y'all with me this morning? The Bible says that Peter... He, 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 he preached the gospel to him. He said, David is laying there. David is in the tomb. But the one that you ought to be coming after is not David. It's not Moses. It's, it's not any of those folks. They were good people. They were God's servants. But these aren't the ones you ought to be looking after. You ought to be seeking the one whom you crucified. You ought to be seeking the one that you pierced. You ought to be seeking the one that you let his blood fall on unholy ground. You ought to be seeking the one that tried to preach you into the kingdom that is sitting there now sits on the right hand side of the father. The Lord had to show Peter that in order to follow me from this point, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. Some of us have been on this journey for a minute and, and, and there's been all kind of doctrines said, well, you don't need some people say you don't need the Holy Spirit. You don't need this. You don't need this. You good. You're saved. You got the blood. But I'm here to tell you, if the Lord didn't want you to have the Holy Spirit, he never would have mentioned it. There are things that in the Bible, if the Bible says this is what you need in order to accomplish the mission. You are sitting here like a Peter. You are, no, you are sitting here like a Simon and you'll never be a Peter. You will sit like a Simon and a Shaniqua. <laughs> that's, my, that's my girl version of Simon. Shaniqua. <laughs> and 
and, 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 and. You'll never be a Peter or a Pauline. You know what I'm saying? You need the Holy Spirit. If it wasn't important, he would never have told them to tarry, to wait on the Holy Ghost. If it wasn't important, he would have never said, don't you run out there unless you have power sent from on high. I'm going back to the Father, but I'm going to send you somebody. I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send power. And what I like about this thing, that when I got back in the book of Acts and read the first chapter, I noticed that every good fire begins with a good wind. So before there was fire, there was a sound of rushing wind. Because in order for the fire to spread, sometimes you got to blow on it so that it gets up. And it roars and it, it catches others on fire. Amen, somebody. You see, the Peter, when Peter was transformed, it was no longer about might. It was no longer about power. It was by my spirit, saith the Lord. You see, when Peter transformed from wimp to warrior, his enemies hadn't changed they were still there. Your haters ain't going to leave. They're still there. Why? Because the Lord says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You think that because God stretches the linen that your enemies are going to run away. He said, no, let them see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Let them see how good God is. Let them see how great and mighty is the Lord. Don't run them off. But when they hate on you, tell them if you just do right. That's what the Lord told Cain. He said, if you just do right, I'll bless you like I blessed Abel. If you just do right, what you see this person getting is yours for the asking as well. Amen, somebody. You see, when Peter transformed from wimp to warrior, his enemies didn't change. The same devil was still prowling, seeking whom he may devour. The religious and the government authorities were still planning uh, and, and seeking to kill all that believed and preached in the insurrectionist name of Jesus Christ. Though they didn't change, Peter changed. He was filled with the power of the living God. Some of us are trying to be better, but you're trying to be better off your own fire and not God's fire. But I heard, <laughs> you know, sometimes you hear some things, but, but I heard <laughs> there's a fire not created by the natural combustible elements and man-made solutions of this world. I heard a Holy Ghost fire that not only does it reveal what is holy and what is unholy. Isaiah said it took away the reproach of sin. I heard somebody say when they tried to describe it, they said it's like fire shut up in my bones. I heard that it's not that, that you need it so bad like the body needs air. So the soul needs this fire. It was important that Jesus said don't do nothing wait tarry until the fire comes some of us need this fire in our lives so you see there must be something about this fire because when Peter called on fire he got up and he preached an uncompromising word and he preached in the same city that he failed he preached until the enemy was shamed and God reigned when Peter got the fire Peter preached until the devil had enough. Peter preached until the fire shone light into dark places and sin had to roll back for God's glory. Peter preached until the sick got well and, and to those that said couldn't say amen had to begin to raise their hand and said give me what you got because what I've been living in 
is not good enough for what I need. He preached until the moniker of his failure fell off and the new name and title finisher was put on him. Won't the Lord finish what he began? I don't know about you this morning, but I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I've said to the Lord, I need more power to accomplish the mission that you sent me out to do. I don't want to be like Peter, but I want to be the one that you can say it, you because you failed. I'm going to give you more power because you failed. I'm going to show you a better way because you failed. I'm going to teach you how to be successful. So when I, when I fail, it won't be forever. But there's a way back to Jesus. Jesus, whom after I'm sifted, remembers not my failure, but looks at my rise. Ain't you glad that your sifting wasn't your ending, but your beginning? I'm so glad that the Lord saw the sinner in me from the very beginning but he saw the end from the beginning that while I was yet sinner the Bible said Jesus died for me that I may have a right to the tree of life he laid down the pre-work <laughs> brother preachers for my rework <laughs> when he made a way unto salvation for whosoever to, to come and be saved I may be sifted I may be sifted but I'm going to take a note from my good old friend Job when he said though he slay me <laughs> yes though I'm sifted though he slay me yet will I trust him Paul said it this way he said I'm pressed but I'm not crushed perplexed but I'm not in despair sometimes I'm persecuted and mistreated for no reason but even then I look to the Lord and I see I'm not abandoned sometimes I'm struck down a few times but I'm not destroyed and I thank God that he's still on his throne he hasn't abandoned you to failure because failure is not forever failure is only momentary but he told him he told him God had so much confidence in the grace that he had given Peter he had so much confidence in the power that Peter was going to receive he says to him look at this funny thing he says to me to him he says look Peter once this is done once this is done when you return to me he says strengthen your brethren what is the Lord saying? He's saying, I see the end from the beginning. I knew you were going to fail. That's why I try to prepare you by telling you what is going to happen. But even when you fail, I'm still a finisher. Even when you fail, I'm still your hope for tomorrow. Even when you fail, I'm still your lifter. Even when you fail, I'm still your hope and your help. Even when you fail, I can still fight your battles. Even when you fail, my tower is still strong. Even when you fail, I'm still there. I can help you. He says, when you fail, but when you return, strengthen your brothers. What is he saying? He's saying, I know when you fail, it's going to be hard for you. But when you come back, you're going to be better than what you were before you failed. And when folks are going to think that you ought to be taking the back seat, you're going to take the front seat because I've sent you back because failure made you better. I sent you back. To help your brothers. Your failure made you better. I sent you back to help your sisters. To tell them yes. We all are going to fail sometimes. But Jesus Christ has sent us a helper. The Holy Ghost. To give us power to succeed. It ain't about your ego. It ain't about what you think you can do. It ain't about how many days you attend church. It ain't about all of those things. It's about will you bend the knee 
to the king of kings and lord of lords and submit your life as a living sacrifice unto him so that he can tap you on your shoulder and say get up for you are a new creature old things have passed away and all things have become brand new won't you be a new creature today God bless you God keep you stay through the sifting amen amen praise the Lord praise the Lord thank you Reverend Floyd hallelujah bless the name of the Lord in this house God bless you, Reverend Floyd. Amen, amen, amen. That's all right, that's all right. Too much fire. There's a wind blowing. There's a wind blowing in this place. Glory to his name. God is blowing outside and some fire came on the inside. I know you've been blessed this morning by that word. And if you've heard that word in video land, in the audience, we extend an invitation to you. The invitation to Christian discipleship. You may come by letter by candidate for baptism or Christian experience. Baptism, we know that the Lord uh, calls us to be baptized in the water if we have declared that God has saved us. If that Holy Spirit has come on you and you've never been baptized and you want to go into the water and tell the church and tell the world that I have been saved, we'd love to be the ones to baptize you. If you've already been baptized and you've been a member of another church and you want to join Shiloh, you can come, uh, you can bring a letter from your old church or you can just come by your own Christian testimony. Just come and tell us I've been saved. God saved me. I've been saved a long time. I'm so glad to come and worship but I want to make my membership here at Shiloh. Your own Christian testimony. We don't need a letter from another church. God will testify through you. Because when God changes you it shows in your walk. That's what he said when Peter, 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 Peter thought he had something already. Peter was standing in the shadow of Jesus Christ. Peter had followed Jesus for three long years. Peter had sat under the teaching of Jesus Christ. Peter said, I'm ready to go with you wherever you're good and ready to go, God. Jesus says, you ain't ready yet. Matter of fact, you can't even be ready till I go where I'm going. By tomorrow morning, you're going to see yourself completely different. But I'm going to go to a place so that you can have the power from on high. When I get back to my Father, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to touch your soul, to strengthen you, and give you the ability to come where I am. Because it's that Holy Spirit that allows you to go where Jesus goes. If that Holy Spirit is moving in you today and he's compelling you to stand where you're at, you can stand and let us know you want to join the church. You want to be baptized. You want to declare that Jesus is your Lord and Savior today. On the altar. Amen. Seeing there is none, there is still room at the cross. God bless you. God bless you. What a word. What a word. Let's give God some praise for that word from on high. You know what time it is, Shiloh. It's giving time. Time for us to give. There are four ways to give. You can give uh, using Givelify online, using the Givelify app. You can use text to give. You can mail in your offering or you can drop your offering in the box. Amen. Those of you in the house, if you want to drop your offering in the box or the basket, we have envelopes in the back. You can use an envelope if you want to declare where you want your money to go. Ties, Sunday school, benevolent, uh, uh, capital stewardship, wherever you would like to de designate that your money would go. Just a plain old offering, uh, you may do that. 
or if you want to just drop some cash in the box, that'll go into the basket. Uh, what goes in the basket will be going to benevolent. Amen. We try to help people if we can. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We thank you for all of your giving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This young lady. Amen. 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 You're standing for it. Use that mic right there. Amen. Amen. You're coming to uh, give your life to Christ. You want to be baptized. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody in church ought to shout hallelujah. Amen. The best gift that anybody can give is to give their life to Christ. I don't care how much of what God has given us. When we give our life to Christ, we ought to shout because the angels in heaven are shouting right now. Glory to his name. Praise his holy name. Amen. Glory to God. God is in the blessing business. Amen. At this time, we're going to stand for our benediction and the blessing of our offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father God, we come right now. We want to thank you for all that you're doing in your kingdom. This is your kingdom, and we are living in your kingdom under your rule. We want to thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. We ask that you bless the offerings that are being brought forth today. Bless both the gift and the giver. Bless them and bless that offering that it be sufficient for the work you've placed into our hands now father as we come to depart from this place but never to depart from your very presence may the love of jesus the grace of god the communion of the sweet holy spirit rest rule and abide with each and every believer and all the believers said amen amen